welcome to three keys that you, to being the priestess in love, life, and beyond. The room is silent. You're on opposite sides of the room. Again. You're heartbroken. You can't imagine living your life with this heartbreak again. You can't imagine breaking up again. You can't imagine all the work that you've done and all the things that you've tried. Just, it's not working. And you're heartbroken. How many of you have ever experienced that? Yeah, thank you. It's, it's not fun. My name is Kimmy Avery, and I have been studying love and relationships my whole life. I've been with my husband now for 11 years. Amazing. I never, I'm 49 years old. We get to travel the world. We're actually going to be putting together some couples events on um, some, a yacht in the Caribbean. It does sound like fun, right? right? Scuba diving and having a great time. And things are awesome. And it wasn't always this way. I have, I got, met my husband when I was 38 years old. And I had gone to girls boarding school. My, one of my gals here, Frances, is helping me out. We went to high school together. We went to girls boarding school. I went to women's college. I was taught to be a strong, powerful woman and not need a man. How many of you have been taught to not need anybody, right? You don't want to be needy, right? So I was conditioned to, that I could have the standard fairy tale where I could have it all, you know, have the family life, have the career that I loved, and I spent a lot of time frustrated and confused. I actually went to two weddings of men I was deeply in love with, and I watched them marry other women. Like, talk about the worst pain ever. And I, there I was sitting in the audience going, why wasn't that me? You know, it's not like I'm funny looking, and I'm not a mean person. I'm a pretty loving person. And I was really, really confused and really hurt. And of course, at 37, 38 years old, my biological clock was ticking like insane. And uh, when I met my husband, I actually, he was fixing my computer, and which turns out it wasn't broken. But the power had died, and I didn't realize, so I went to the, sh anyway. So it's sitting on the table there, and we're kind of chatting back and forth, and it was in this weird box-like building, and so every, open to everybody, and one of his employees said, God, you know, you two are flirting. It was so weird and awkward. But anyway, so my calendar pulled up on my computer screen, and he said, you know, so what's happening tomorrow? And I said, well, I'm breaking up with a guy I've been seeing because it's totally not a match. The guy had said, oh, yeah, I want a family, but he was insane. And um, so that was not a match. I'm breaking up with him, and tomorrow I'm freezing my eggs. I cannot stand the stress. And he said, well, when that's taken care of, I'd love to take you out. <laughs> And so I broke up with the guy. The next night I went out, that was August 11th, 2005. We got engaged in December, and here we are. So, it, you know, I was pretty upset and frustrated, and I had been taught that men and women were exactly the same. That's what we were taught in the feminist movement, right? It's, we've gotten a, made huge strides. In, with the feminist movement. We've earned a lot of rights, and it's been amazing. We're almost at 100 years of being able to vote legally, right? We've made strides, and there's still tension. How many of you noticed that there's still a little tension, right? Well, that tension comes from misunderstandings, and that's what we're going to talk about today, as how to be the priestess in your relationship, in love, life, and beyond, because it takes us standing in our feminine power, but you've got to understand the terrain. If you don't understand the terrain, then you've, you're not going to have a relationship work. Okay? So, let me... So how 
many of you, uh, what do you think a priestess means? What's, what does it mean to be a priestess? Highly respected. What's that? Highly respected. Highly respected, yes. Holy. Holy, like sacred, yeah. Connected to spirit, yeah. Sovereign in your own choices, yes. Playful, yes. Powerful, yes. Sexy, yes. An initiator, yes. Uh, and I'd also add, those are all great answers, and I'd add that being a priestess is about holding the space for transformation and ritual to happen. And, you know, we can have very elaborate ritual. We had a beautiful elaborate ritual this morning. And it can be a daily ritual. Rituals are things that we do over and over again in a systematized way. You can have a ritual of where you put your keys in the, at night so that you know where they are in the morning, right? You can have a ritual of coffee. That's my ritual, making my coffee, right? You can have all kinds of rituals. And I propose that as a priestess in our relationships, of all kinds, that we hold space and create the context for that. How many of you have tried to create a sacred context in your relationship and had your guy sort of go, or guy or gal sort of go, yeah, I, you know, I'm not, I'm, there would be a little resistant to that. What's that? Inconsistent. It's inconsistent, right? <clears throat> Part of that is because we try to make it too elaborate, and it's, we've got a lot of things going on in our daily life, especially in today's world. <clears throat> we have about 950 trillion bits of information coming into our brain every single day, and it's just accelerating the way our world is, right? So slowing down and creating sacred space in a slower experience for at least 16 minutes. I, I recommend to my clients a daily connection ritual. 16 minutes will do a lot for your relationship. And then you can build on that. So being the priestess, it requires intention. It requires knowing how to understand the terrain. But before I get there, I want to talk about the masculine and feminine instinct and spirit. And this is critical to understanding the whole math, our relationship dynamics. In this globe here, you've got masculine and feminine and instinct. The masculine mode is the provider, protector, producer energy. We all have that energy within us. The feminine mode is a supporter, adapter, enhancer. We all have that within us. And these are both instinctual. And the biggest lie of the feminist movement was that we're the same. Men and women are dramatically different. And we all have this as instinctually the masculine and feminine within us. And being women, we adapt. So single mothers will end up being a lot more masculine. A single woman providing and protecting for herself will have that driving. When we talk about be getting into your feminine mode, it's about flow. Now, part of us, you know, our culture values the masculine. So we're driven. And we're almost condemned, unless we're in a circle of people like this, for Slowing down, taking a nap, walking in the forest, <laughs> oh, just enjoying life, right? We, you know, how are you going to be productive? That's all, and all of this is on the undercurrent of our lives, right? And then spirit and conscious choice happens up here. How many of you consider yourself a conscious being? Yeah, you wouldn't be here if you didn't, right? So being a conscious being means that we have choice. Now, here's the truth. You can be the most conscious person in the world, 
and get tripped up in your relationship if you don't understand this dynamic. If you don't understand how the masculine and feminine are playing out, you're going to butt heads. The truth is that men and women are so different that we'd be better off if we actually spoke different languages because then we wouldn't think we were communicating. <laughs> we have a lot easier time if we go to a foreign country and they speak a different language. What do we do? We slow down, we get curious, we ask questions, we think about speaking in their language so that we can communicate our message. As women, we often are, well, typically, I call it stuck in your own head syndrome, we make assumptions about the world. We make assumptions that the people out there are thinking like us. Women typically look at men as hairy, misbehaving women. <laughs> They're doing things we would never do, and we're upset. They're doing things we would absolutely, or things that we would never do. They're not doing the things we would absolutely do, and we're upset. And we spend a lot of time upset. And the truth is that that upset, it's cortisol and adrenaline on top of us being in masculine mode. Dr. Don Colbert says that that level of cortisol and adrenaline sear the body the way acid sears metal. When you're upset all the time in your relationships, you will spiral down. So this is critical to understand here. You need the skill set for navigating this, the waters here in order to get here so that you don't find yourself spiraling down. You know, we, uh, most of you, if not everybody in the room, raised your hand saying you feel like you're a conscious human being. Yeah. And still, sometimes your relationships haven't worked out. That's because we haven't understood this dynamic. And that was what was playing out. That was the reason I'd gone to, uh, or that I was so frustrated. And I was 38 years old, and I hadn't met the love of my life. I had met loves who, like I said, married other people. And I studied, I've been studying love and spirituality my whole life. I went to uh, my first church when I was five. I did a lot of church surfing. I have a bachelor's in family studies and human development. I've got a master's in counseling psychology. I'm a certified relationship coach. I'm an NLP health certified master practitioner and trainer. So I've been doing a ton of work on myself. And the piece that made the difference for me was when I started understanding this. And that started about 12 years ago. Funny, it was the year before I met my husband. Right? And the, it's, it's the reason that I've not only I met him, but I was able to navigate the relationship with him and stay married. That's the key, is stay married. There was a book that my um, sister-in-law gave me years ago that said, um, even God is single, so stop giving me a hard time, right? <laughs> and it was like 26 snappy single girl comebacks to the famous question, why aren't you married? And it's easy to get married, but many, many people do. But staying married in a happy relationship, that's the challenge. So we're going to be covering how... Um, the challenges that we face in, in understanding our partner and getting our needs met can either take us into a descending spiral out of the relationship or into an ascending spiral up into that conscious partnership. How many of you would like some conscious partnership in your life? Thank you. So the three things we're going to talk about um, is the terrain, understanding the terrain in your relationship, moving the second thing will be moving from furious to curious. And the third thing is clarity. How do you get clear about your experience? So I, I use the word navigation because, as you saw, with the masculine and feminine, we all have it within us. 
There are moments when we're more in masculine mode. That happens, we're out with a girlfriend, years, uh, and the girlfriend becomes maybe a little inebriated, and so all of a sudden you're in protector mode, right? Maybe you were equals before, and then all of a sudden you do a snap decision and you're in protector mode, right? Then when we're um, in feminine mode and we've got somebody who we can support, we do that. We naturally flow into that mode. So as women, we flow back and forth between these modes. And, un and when we're looking at our partner, like we need to understand partner would be partner. Um, you know, anybody who we're romantically interested in. Now, of course, this applies also to your personal or to your business relationships, to your uh, colleagues, to your, I've, I've done some work at Shell Oil, teaching men and women engineers how to navigate the workplace together. Um, so that is all about understanding the masculine and feminine. And the terrain, if you go out on the ocean, and you're going to, you've got a distant view of maybe you want to go to Hawaii, right? But you're not really focused on it. And you are got the skill sets you have, but you don't have all the tools you need. Do you think you might get to Hawaii? Maybe. You'd kind of be winging it, right? Navigation skills are literally about understanding the terrain. So when we are looking at a man as a misbehaving version of ourselves, that terrain is tainted by our viewpoint. Right? Can you see that? So our viewpoint is looking at him or her, if she's, you know, in, if you're in a lesbian relationship, doesn't matter. You're looking at the other person as if you're a version of yourself. I call that stuck in your own head syndrome. Stuck in your own head syndrome, or CEOs for short. And that is, when we are looking at the terrain of our relationship, we will end up hurt because we're interpreting somebody's behavior as hurtful to us. I'll ex give an example. So the masculine energy is single focused. They're watching a football game and, or a baseball game. My husband happens to be into all sports, not just one, <laughs> all sports. And literally. And so there's always some sort of game on. And because he's single focused, if I try to talk to him during that time, he doesn't respond, or if he does respond, he's not going to remember what I say. So if I don't get his attention right, then it will spiral downward. And then, so, so without this knowledge, what happens is I'm confused because he's not talking to me. Then I'm spinning in my head, and I'm saying, what, why doesn't he love me? Why doesn't he care about me? Why isn't he paying attention to me? This can happen with texting. You know, you text and he doesn't respond right away. <laughs> or um, he's focused on a project and all of a sudden he's not present in your life. Right? And, and we go into this too when we're in masculine mode producing. But that, we take it personally. Now, the hunter, remember we were talking about the provider protector, the hunter is single focused. They don't get the deer if they're not focused on one thing, right? Think about a spear. They're throwing the spear. They're getting the result. And everything in their energy field is driven toward that result. That's how single focus works, OK? So the gatherer, we flow in different directions. We have this diffuse awareness. If we were focused only on one of my favorite things to go gather are chanterelle mushrooms, if I was only focused on chanterelle mushrooms, I'd miss everything else that's edible. And if there were no chanterelles, which is hit and miss, then I'd come home with an empty basket and we might all die, right? So that understanding how single focus works 
we've got her perception of his single focus, and if you don't understand it, it means he's ignoring you. It means he doesn't care about you. He doesn't respect you, right? Th these are all the kinds of things. What else do you tell yourself? I did right. That I didn't do something right. That I didn't do something right. And what were you saying? That not something nice, but... Well, we, we, we start to have some ideas about him that are not so nice, right? <laughs> and that doesn't go very well. We have these thoughts. And then, of course we get stuck because we have a, we're locked in on a way of looking at it. And then from there, we start to get resentful. And we're frustrated. And then we're despairing. Like, how could this happen again? How come I attract guys who don't love me? Maybe the next guy will be better. You know what? I'm out of here. We literally start out at the tr top of the tree of love, and we fall branch by painful branch <laughs> out of the tree of love and land splat on the ground, and we're out. That has to do with the way women commit. We look at the context, and we sort of adjust ourselves. That's the adaptable nature. What we don't know is that the way men commit, think about the deer. You don't get the deer if you're not committed, right? You have to be single focused and committed, which means, number one, they don't commit unless they really, really need to commit, and they are driven to commit. And once they're in, they're in for life. Two thirds of divorces are initiated by women. Two thirds of divorces are initiated by women because we vote every day on the relationship. Right, ladies? Like, we go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. When my husband learned this, he said, he wasn't my husband yet. He was at, about to buy the diamond for my engagement ring that night. And he said, because I was, uh, we were at Alison Armstrong, one of my mentors. We were at her event, and she d was describing this. And he said, so, Kimmy, supposed to get married if you're voting every day on the relationship? Well, I said, there's a switch in your heart that I know is on. It starts when they're building the house for you. It starts when they're thinking about providing for your children. It starts, like, um, one of my clients, she and her boyfriend slash fiance, they're planning a family together. And he, for eight months, he'd been trying to tell her that he was in. And she was upset. She was trying to get on the same page with him. And then we had a conversation. Now, he is thinking about making enough money to pay for the diapers for their unborn children. He's committed. That switch is on in his heart. So it's like men have a commitment circle. And once they put somebody in here, it's on for life. Even if you divorce them. My mother was dying of liver cancer. We found out, it turned out it was 17 days from the day we found out to when she died, really fast. My father, they'd been divorced for 14 years. My father handled her entire estate in those 17 days so she could die in peace. I mean, we didn't know she had cancer until it was, I mean, that was, it was that fast. Liver cancer is kind of a hidden thing. But that's how commitment works, right? And even though she left him, he still wanted to take care of her. How many of you have known guys who have a terrible time leaving a bad relationship? They stay stuck in ones that are just really abusive. And sometimes they'll even, um, you know, it's the woman has done them a favor by leaving because it's horrible, it's not going well, and he doesn't know what to do to fix it, and she doesn't know what to do to fix it, and she's complaining. That's what we do, ladies. We complain when we're, it's not working. And that's because we change when somebody complains to us. Somebody criticizes us, we change. We go, oh, well, I won't wear that dress anymore. 
or, gosh, you think my hair should be this way? I'll change it. Like, we change. We, we, ad we adapt, and we do that to men. We criticize them, and all it does is cause them to back away. And then we're wondering where they went. I know men who've stayed in relationships for, like, 10, 15 years where the woman hasn't touched them or had sex with them for that long. Think about it. We are in a room full of women who can hug each other. We held hands earlier. We whispered in each other's ears. We're gentle to each other. How many of you know guys who get to have that experience? Not so much, right? Unless they're smart and they hang out with a bunch of women. But, you know, because then the women will give a lot of hugs, right? But a lot of guys are suffering. Here's the deal. We can't touch someone without being touched ourselves. And you are the life bringer to the men in your life. That's part of the priestess quality, is being the life bringer. To breathing life into this being. And when we understand and get the skill set, then we can create the partnership, right? So, what I'd like you to do is take a couple minutes. There's the word, I passed out a handout. And on the number one, the first, understanding the terrain. I'd like you to write down some of your biggest ch relationship challenges that you've had. And what frustrates you about men. Now, if, you're, if you date women, yes? When we get the skill set, then we can move up into the ascending and create that partnership where we're all in. Opportunity. Op. Sorry. <laughs> I ran out of room. So if you um, think about your biggest relationship challenges and, and write one of them down, and what frustra frustrates you about men or about your partner if you're, you know, if you're a lesbian? So that's fine. What's the biggest frustrations you have? It'll take about a minute to do that. There is nothing in a woman's nature to get her to be clear about what she needs until she's upset. <laughs> right? And then, we, so on a scale of 1 to 10, so here's our masculine side, here's our feminine side, Men tend to say, I need food. I need sex. And we think over here, we're over here, and we're going, ooh, controlling. God, why do you have to be so demanding, right? And over here, we're like, oh, it would be nice to eat something now. We're hinting, hinting, hinting. And it doesn't really go that well, because they don't read minds. Men are mind readers. In fact, really, nobody is which actually is a great segue into curiosity. So, and I'll finish that. So up here, we tend to start out at a level three, and they want us to be a neon sign. Hey, honey, I need some food now. Can we stop and get something to eat? It's really easy, but we don't even think about that because that feels like we're being demanding, and we don't want to be so pushy, right? And then we learn the skill of being pushy, so we go with that, but then we get labeled bossy. But there's a way to navigate that, and that's a skill set that can be learned. That's the cool part. Okay, so the next thing is from furious to curious. Think of a time when you felt curiosity in your life. When you were curious about you are learning something, curious about somebody's experience. Because of the assumptions that we've been making, sometimes it's hard to get into that place of curiosity. Right? So we're, you know, headed down into resentment instead of using our curiosity to deal with the challenge, use that as a clarifying opportunity. So, Write down a time that you were furious with a partner. 
like really upset about something. Everybody got one? Okay. So here's what happens in that downward spiral we go into upset instead of into partnership. Curiosity brings you into partnership. Curiosity always beats being furious, every time. And I'm cu you could ask, I'm curious, what had you do that that way? Now there's a difference between saying, I'm curious, mm, like because you're already pissed, right? That doesn't, that, it's not gonna go very well because all they hear is the storm. So they're hearing you say, you know, what you need, but they're hearing the storm. Can you see that? They feel your energy. And so it's really a matter of instead of, you know, tar going directly at the, the masculine being in your life, getting really clear about what it is you need, being curious with yourself. What's making me furious? You think that it's because he's doing something a particular way or not doing something you need. You think it's that. But really, it's that you haven't been clear and delivered what you needed in the way that he can receive it. And that means softly, gently, with clarity. That means using appreciation. When I, um, and that's a skill set. And when you take action and you learn that skill set, then you're going to have that conscious partnership. That's where conscious partnership lives, in intentionality and using the skills to create the partnership. So in that situation I had you write down, how could you have been more curious about yourself? Did everybody get that? And then the next question is, how could you have been more curious about your partner's experience? We can ask questions, and it feels like we're, my father says, what he likes to say, what, what are you, some kind of detective? So there's, in uh, the real truth about successful communication, I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit. I've got a super special offer for you that. I teach you all how to hold the space by literally covering your mouth and listening to the answers. It's amazing. Women often talk over each other, right? We connect on something and then we go on a tangent, we go here, we go there, that's the diffuse awareness. Okay, and think about what that does to a single focused human being. <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen the glaze? I had an, have an ex-boyfriend who um, named Django, who we, we had gone through a bad breakup. It was on and off again for many years. And um, I connected with him at, about six months after I started learning this material. And I said, I am so sorry. I had no idea what was happening. And I was talking about the glaze. And he goes, yeah, I coach men how to be, look, sound, or, you know, like, look like they're interested when they're doing the glaze. Like, you know, so, because it happens. Men experience it all the time. And so our task is to learn how to receive the answers when you ask a question, when you use that curiosity, and that's a skill set. So you may have been thinking that they're not listening or there's no depth there. How many of you have ever thought a guy was shallow? They're emotionally unavailable. They don't, you know, they don't think deeply, right? We just have all kinds of thoughts about them. But really, it's that we're not communi communicating in a language that they understand. Yeah? Yeah. We speak 4,000 words to men is 200. Yeah. If you think about a man as single focused, and we want to get all this information out, like you've been saying, and we're trying to explain the rules, and we're talking a mile a minute, and we're speaking thousands of words, and they're like on the first 10. Exactly what she's saying. 
Yeah. Yeah. Women speak on average about 25,000 words a day. Men speak about 5,000 words a day. And as in the famous words of my father, that's all you need. 5,000 words a day. Men typically speak a day. Women speak about 25,000 words a day. And of course, we have nuances and details because all of those are important. As a gatherer, if I don't tell you every detail about a chanterelle mushroom, you're going to pick the look-alike that could kill you, right? It's got a nice thick stem. It's got scalloped edges. It's mustardy yellow. They grow at this time in this place. And if you look up the hill, you can see them. If you look down the hill, you can't. Like, it's really specific. And we tell all the details. How about going to the grocery store? You're sending your guy to the grocery store, and you tell him all the details, and you see the glaze. And you're like going, oh, shit, he's not going to get it. He's not, he's... And so he goes off. He knows he's doomed. You're going to be pissed. It's like, thank God for cell phones with a camera. You can take a picture and send it to him. My husband was going to Costco the other day, and I, I, wrote a, I write lists, and I text it to him. And then he goes right down the list. He gets exactly what I want. But that, God, before phones, I don't know. Anyway, so... Now, I'm lost on time. How many more minutes? We've got 10 minutes left. OK. So let's do a quick exercise on the back of the sheet, clarity. Think about what you truly desire in a relationship. It's what if, what if, it has everything to do with how you communicate your needs and has nothing to do with your thoughts that he doesn't care about you or she doesn't care about you. What if it has to do with a skill set that you can learn to create the relationship of your dreams? Like, if you had that, this, the right skills to navigate your relationship, what would that do for you? What would it be like if you had those skills and you could go into that ascending spiral and you could move in to being able to use the confusion from the challenge to, because, you know, relationships always have challenges, right? No, they don't. <laughs> so, I mean, life happens. Those are challenges. How we look at them is everything. So what if it could be a clarifying opportunity for yourself? What do I need? Learning to express that or finding out what your partner needs or your, the, your contractor. Deciding who is accountable for the project. That's, when, that's the big issue with, with that. It's like dueling providers, right? Who's accountable for what? We can ask a man to do something for us, but if we're always orchestrating and micromanaging, it doesn't go very well. Um, then we need to express. We need to know how to express what's important to us. And we need to have radical appreciation. Radical appreciation. What you focus on grows. What you, you know, out of those 950 trillion bits of information, what you focus on grows. So, and Amanda, why don't you, you could probably start pa passing this out, thanks. And then, when you express appreciation and you can, are clear about what you need, you start to feel fulfilled. You start to be able to maintain that relationship. And then you have the experience of being all in. Like a couple I worked with, um, she came to see me when she was convinced, the relationship was over. I'm not getting back together with him. No way, no how. So we're doing some singles work together and helping her get clear about what happened and unpacking the past. Next thing I know, she says to me, well, I want him to do some coaching. I'm going to tell him to do some singles coaching with you too. So I start working with him. So I'm working with, with both of them. 
separately on their own personal calls, unpacking the disaster that had happened in their relationship. And we start for doing forgiveness. Next thing I know, I get a phone call, and they say that they're um, going to start doing the coaching together. That was intriguing. So they start doing the coaching. We unpacked a very hurtful experience where he had done what he thought was the right thing and moved them out of the state that they were living in, where they'd had their own business and she was surrounded by her family. Unbeknownst to her, her brothers and her father had get, ganged up on him and said, if you don't make, some, make more money, you're not providing for her the way she deserves it. If you don't get it together, you know, we're, we're going to take you down. Like, they were upset with him. So he pulled out, took him to another state. She had no idea that this had happened. And she was crushed. She was all of a sudden alone in Texas, away from her family. And he had left the business that they'd been working on together. She was crushed. And then we did the healing and unpacking of that. And then they began to connect more. So I'm getting the bell. And I think that means I've got five minutes left. OK. so. That couple is now, three years later, happily together because they unpack the hurt feelings and they learn the skills of forgiveness and, that, and they understood each other as men and women. And now they can make great deals and now they have the partnership that they deserve. And then they can spend the time up in consciousness, in choice, right? So we've talked about a lot of skills here and a lot of things. And I know relationships are very holographic. It's not like point A to point B. One plus one equals two. It's not that simple. And it's a, there's skills that you can be learned that aren't taught in our schools, especially women's school, <laughs> girls' boarding school. Or it's, and we have a lot of viewpoints in, this, in our culture that see men as misbehaving. And then we're angry, and we go at it in a fight mode. When I brought this, the Workplace Navigation System program into Shell Oil, the women would get hired and then leave. But once we started un teaching them how to understand the men they were working with and the men to understand the women, that was where the peace began to happen. It's very powerful. So, I have a special offer right now, and I've got there. You should have received two sheets. One has a feedback form on the back. The other one is um, the sign up for a relationship breakthrough session. And the special offer that I have there's a program that I have called the Real Truth About Successful Communication Between Men and Women. It's all about how men speak and listen differently what you can do to generate this sacred listening, which means you find the deepest gems of wisdom within the, your partner's heart, and you can share your truth with your partner. And you get the listening that you need, where you end up feeling adored and appreciated. How many of you would like that? Yeah, thank you. So. This comes with a home study program, which is an audio and a workbook, and then a live special training session with me on this material where you can bring your partner to the call. And you'll, the, that will be scheduled in the beginning of October. And then you get, as a special bonus, you'll have a one-hour coaching session with me. And the regular investment in this program is $697 because the one hour coaching is about $500 and then the program is $197. And so how many of you would like to know the special offer for today? It's $97. I really want everybody to have this material because when I believe there will be peace on earth, men and women realize what treasures they are to each other. This is something that we can do to create peace in our own lives. Learning this material changed my life. It healed my relationship with my dad. It made, and I fought with my dad for 15 years, like 
horrible, horribly. It made it possible for me to meet and marry my partner. It healed my relationship with and uplifted my relationship with all the men that I work with and that I'm in connection with. So what I invite you to do is sign up for that program. You, you'll get an immediate email that has the access to the home study program. So you'll get to practice it a little bit before we do our one-on-one -on -one call. And then the live training call where you can bring a partner onto that call. I recommend sharing it with your partner. Or even somebody, maybe you're not in a relationship now, share it with somebody that you can talk to about your relationship styles and their relationship styles. Are you more on the masculine? Are you more on the feminine? What works for you? And how can you be more feminine? Or how can you be more masculine given this, whichever, whatever the circumstances? Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you take action now, you'll have an opportunity to create the true partnership that you desire. So um, Francis will collect the forms. When you're finished with these forms, you can take them over to Francis. We can, and if, and, uh, if you have any questions for me, I'll be over in this area. And oh, I have another special gift. Um, the book, Incredible Life, I wrote a chapter in that book. That's a gift for anybody who signs up today. Um, and the offer is good for the whole weekend till Sunday night. So you can sign up for the relationship or the real truth right now. And also, you, if you are interested in doing a relationship breakthrough session with me, please fill that out too. Okay? Thank you. You have been a wonderful, wonderful group. I'm so grateful that you all showed up.